Okay, we are continuing with chapter five. We're moving into section 5.2. We're still solving systems of equations, but now we're solving systems by another method. So we saw in the first section, we saw how to solve a system by graphing, by looking for the point of intersection. Now in this section here, we're solving by substitution. So our core concepts here on how we solve by substitution. First thing, you need to solve one of the equations for one of the variables. So what does that mean? That means we need to get it in y equals or sometimes solve for x. Then we're going to substitute the expression from step one into the other equation and solve for the other variable. Finally, step three, we're going to substitute the value from step one into one of the original equations and solve. So first step, have one of our equations in either y equals or x equals. Then we're going to substitute that into the other equation. Following that, we're going to solve for the variable. We'll get either what x is equal to or y is equal to. And then we're going to solve for our, our second variable to get an ordered pair. So let's take a look at this equation here. We have two equations. We have y equals negative 2x minus 9. And then we have 6x minus 5y equals negative 19. So the good news is here, one of our equations is already solved for y. We already have one of them in y equals. Okay, we've got y equals negative 2x minus 9. So now what you're going to do is you're going to substitute that entire negative 2x minus 9 in for y in your second equation. Okay, that's why we call it substitution, because that entire negative 2x minus 9 is replacing y in our second equation. So what is that going to look like? That's going to look like 6x minus 5 times, and we put it in parentheses, okay, because we're going to have to do some distribution, and we're replacing that entire y, or y with that entire negative 2x minus 9, okay? The whole idea is we've now gotten rid of one of our variables. We're only dealing with x here, and we're going to set that equal to my right side, which is negative 19. So all I've done is I replaced the blue y with what y is equal to based on my other equation. From this step, I'm going to distribute. So I'm going to get 6x. Negative 5 times negative 2x is going to be a plus 10x. And then negative 5 times negative 9 is going to be a plus 45 is equal to negative 19. Let's combine our like terms here. 6x plus 10x is 16x plus 45 is equal to negative 19. Let's subtract the 45 from both sides. We're going to get 16x. Then if we do negative 19 minus 45, we're going to get negative 64. Divide by 16. And I'm going to get x is equal to negative 4. This is not my entire solution. Keep in mind when we're talking about a system of equations, our solution is a point. It's the point of intersection. But now I have my x value, and now I can take that x value, and I can plug it into either one of my equations, either equation 1 or 2, and solve for y. I'm going to plug it into equation 1 because that's a little bit easier, and I'm going to get what y is equal to. So y is equal to negative 2, and I'm plugging in my x value of negative 4, minus 9. y is equal to 8 minus 9. So y is equal to negative 1. So now I have my solution here. Remember, your solution to any system of equations is an ordered pair. Your x value is equal to negative 4, and your y value is equal to negative 1. If I wanted to, I could plug that point back into both of my equations to check my solution. I would see that it is true, that it works for both of these equations. I could graph this. So I could graph both of my equations in Desmos and look at the point of intersection. And those two graphs would intersect at the point negative 4, comma, negative 1. Several examples that we'll look at in class. Notice sometimes both of your equations are solved for y. That's perfectly acceptable in that particular case here. We're just going to take that 3x plus 4, and we're going to plug it in right there, where y is in my second equation and solve for there. Sometimes you'll notice 
X is solved for. That's perfectly allowed as well. Okay, we can have X solved for in that particular case. Then you're going to replace X in your equation. So we're going to plug that 6Y minus 7 in there and go through the same process. Okay, but the key thing is you need to have a variable solved for. Sometimes it doesn't happen. So if we're looking here in example number two, sometimes you don't have an, you don't have either of your equations solved for. So you have to say to yourself, let me find what's easiest to solve for. In both of these equations, it's pretty easy to solve for y. I'm going to solve for y in equation number one. So I'm going to add this x to both sides. That'll cancel. And now I'm left with y equals x plus 3. So now my equation is solved for a variable. I solved it for y. Could I solve for x? Sure. But I wanted to solve for y. Now I'm going to take this entire, oops, this entire x plus 3, and I'm going to plug it in for y in my other equation. So this is going to replace y right there in my second equation. Now, notice there's no variable in front of it, so that's perfectly fine. We can think of it as a 1, or we can just replace y with that. So we're going to get 3x plus x plus 3, I'm going to put it in parentheses, because I always do, is equal to negative 1. Now, there's nothing really to distribute here besides a 1, which isn't going to do anything. But I'm going to get 3x plus 1x plus 3 is equal to negative 1. Let's solve for x now. Combine your like terms right here. 4x plus 3 is equal to negative 1. Subtract the 3. 4x is equal to negative 4, divide by 4, and you're going to get an x value equal to negative 1. Remember, we're not done, okay? You want to get your y value now. Doesn't matter where you plug in. To prove my point, I could plug into my original equation 1. I could plug into my solve for equation 1. I want to just show you it doesn't matter. I can plug in for equation 2, okay? If I do that, I'm going to get... My y value, 3 times negative 1 plus y is equal to negative 1. So I get negative 3 plus y equals negative 1. And if I solve for y here, I'm going to get my y value equal to 2. So x is equal to negative 1, y is equal to 2. Remember, my final solution is an ordered pair. So in this case, it is negative 1 comma 2. If I wanted to graph it, I certainly could graph this. I could go to Desmos, check my answer by graphing. So let's take a look quickly how that would work. So if I go to Desmos and the graphing calculator, I can put these two equations in, negative x plus y equals 3. And 3x plus y equals negative 1. And if I take a look at that point of intersection, it's at the point negative 1, comma 2, which is what I got as my solution by using substitution. Now, you won't always have the luxury of Desmos. You need to know how to use all of the different techniques in order to solve by substitution. We'll take a look at this example in class that deals with a word problem. See you then.